you add a little black pepper, mm -hmm. a little salt. You simmer for a little while, and there you have it, the perfect sauce. Mmm, smells wonderful. What do I serve it with? Ah, uh, this sauce, Greta, you serve with a spoon. Otherwise, your hands, they get terribly burnt. <laughs> oh, Rosa, you're so funny. <laughs> you see, Greta, you see, what do I yes, serve yes, it I with? Yes, I know, Rosa, very funny. Look at me, I'm laughing, see? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> now, can we get on with it, please? Okie dokie. Now, this sauce, it goes with everything. Meat, pasta, fish, everything. Mm. What's it called? It's called salsa pomodora. Salsa pomodora. Sounds fabulous. What's that mean in English? Tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my poor dear light husband, who is no longer with us because he passed away and died. <laughs> He used to have a special name for this sauce. What was it? Dead horse. <laughs> but I don't know why. Well, it's rhyming slang, Rosa. You know, like Joe Blake Snake. Ah! Ah! Quick, quick, shoot it with the broom. No, 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 my legs are allergic to snakes. <laughs> Calm down, Rosa. There is no snake. Are you sure? Yes, I was just explaining about rhyming slang. You see, that's why Enzo called it dead horse. Oh, I see. Because a dead horse lies along the ground like a snake. <gasps> no, it's not. It's a bit more complex than that. No, that's true. A dead horse does lie along the ground. Or if it stands up, it's not for long. At last I understand. No, Rosa, you're confused, you see. Joe Blake rhymes with snake, therefore oh, I dead see. horse... I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Dead horse rhymes with salsa bombadora. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Rosa. Now, let's get on with the recipes, can we? If I'm going to cook this for Bruno tonight, we'll have to get a move on. Okie dokie. Right. Now, what do I serve this sauce on? You serve this sauce on and a... don't say on a plate. It was going to be a joke, Greta. <laughs> a funny one. No time for funny jokes, Rosa. Now, can I serve it on spaghetti? Oh, it's bellissimo on spaghetti. Uh, Greta, you know how to tell when spaghetti is perfectly cooked? No, how? Well, first of all, you very carefully pour off the boiling water. Yeah. And then you very carefully lift the spaghetti. Yeah. And then you throw it against the wall. Eh? Why? And if that spaghetti sticks to the wall, it's perfectly cooked. <laughs> what if it doesn't? Well, then you've got a great big mess all over the floor. <laughs> oh, Rosa, you're so funny. <laughs> you see, Greta, I see it if you throw it against the yes, wall. Yes, I know what you said, and it is very funny. You look at me, I'm hysterical. Now, can we get on with it, please? I'm also in a hurry. <laughs> you must laugh, Greta. That's the trouble with we Australians. Always too busy to laugh. You should remember what Enzo said. What? Rosa, he would say... He called me Rosa because that is my name. <laughs> can we get on with it, please? Rosa, he would say, if you cannot laugh, you may as well drink. And what did Enzo do, laugh or drink? Oh, I tell you, Greta. Now, Enzo was a very interesting man. First, he would laugh, a big laugh. <laughs> and then he would stop laughing and he would have a drink, a big drink. <laughs> and then he would laugh again and then he would drink again. And then he would and then... laugh again? No, then he would fall over. That's Italian for <laughs> fighting. <laughs> Enzo, Giovanni, Giuseppe, Bertolucci. How I miss him. He was Italian, you know. <laughs> well, your father, he'll be home soon now, Greta. Oh, well, I'll be off then. Bye-bye, Rosa. Would you mind putting his paper in the lounge room, please? Where is it? On the dishwasher. Oh. Uh, Rosa? Look, it's Dad. Oh, it can't be. <laughs> Who put the right about Ted? It is. Mr. Unlucky, car stolen 13 times. Is Mr. Ted Bullpit of Goanna Heights the unluckiest man in Australia? Not only are his initials TB, he has had to cop up with huge insurance loadings because his Commodore has been stolen 13 times. <gasps> He's been stolen again. <clears throat> when informed of the 13th theft by our reporter, the hapless Mr. Bullpit said he wished to pickle his grandmother. <laughs> and then fainted. 
Oh, Greta, we're in for a terrible evening. My laughing days are over. Why? Well, first his car has been stolen, and now I've got to tell him that Bob and Merle are coming for dinner. <laughs> you will stay, Greta. Oh, no, I couldn't. Not Bob. Not with his hands. What do you mean? His hands, they're everywhere. He's uncontrollable when women are around. Oh, he's never tried anything with me. <laughs> yes, well, I'll be off. <laughs> oh, Nina, you put that paper next to your father's chair, please. Yeah, right oh. You bloody who, I'm home. <laughs> Hello, Ted. How was your day? Bloody shambles, of course, but I don't want to talk about it. Okie dokie. Thirteen times, Rosa. Thirteen times. Those bloody car thieves have done more miles in it than I have. <laughs> Should be a law against pinching Commodores. There is. No, there's not. There's a law against pinching other cars, but it's open season on Commodores. Anyone can pinch them. <laughs> oh, well, you try not to think about it, Ted. You try to forget it. How can I forget it? Now, when the lights turn green, the only thing I put my foot down on is the footpath. <laughs> I hate being a pedestrian. Give me feet a headache. <laughs> Talking of headaches... Don't tell me we've been burgled. No. Don't tell me the house has been burned down. No. Oh, God, there's only one thing worse than that. Oh, God, Bob and Merle are coming for dinner. <laughs> right. Typical. The whole world's plotting against me as usual. Where's me paper? In the lounge room. Oh. <laughs> Thirteen times. Thirteen big bites out of me. No claim bonus. <laughs> Why does it always have to be me? They never pinched Malcolm Fraser's car. <laughs> Just cause Tammy sat in it. <laughs> they never pinched the Governor General's car. Just cause the Queen sat in it. <laughs> they never pinched Doug Anthony's car. Just cause there's a sheep in the boot. <laughs> it's get Ted as usual. It's the doorbell, Rosa! Well, what do you want me to do about it? Answer the bloody thing. Why don't, why don't you? Well, God, it's hard. I've, no, I can't answer it. I've just had my car stolen again. <laughs> What's that going to do with it? Well, nothing. Well, there you are, then. You do it. Go on. Oh, Rosa. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on. Oh, all right, bloody woman. Any more of that and she can pack a picture of Al Grasby and go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Well. A rick a and a fan doogly. Hi there, you there, I'm Troy the boy. Put it there. Pickle me, grandmother. Who are you? Troy Bridges. Don't you remember me? No. <laughs> of course you don't. Last time we met, I wasn't even born. Have you escaped from somewhere? Who are you? <laughs> Does the name Marlene Bridges mean anything to you? No relation to Harbour Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That same magnetic sense of humour I have. It's in the blood. What are you talking about? You're Ted Bulpit. Edward Melba Bulpit? Yeah. Yeah? Well, I finally found you. Marlene Bridges was my mother. So? So? You're my father. Daddy! Pickle <laughs> <me> grandmother! <laughs> well, Dad, is there anything else you'd like to know about me, uh, private life-wise? Look, I'm not your father. Of course you are. Come on, I'm Troy the boy. Your boy. Last I found my daddy. You old sly fox, you hey, 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 stop doing that. How are you, daddy? Stop hey. doing that. No, 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 no. Stop it. But there, after all these years, you must love me. Oh, I don't love you, I hate you. Hate, hate, hate. <laughs> But well, you do love me, don't you? I mean, everybody does. Everyone loves Troy the boy. That's why I'm the number one speedboat salesman in Queensland. I'm not interested. Go away. Have I got just the zippy little unit for you? A 12-foot savage ski boat, 500 horsepower Corvette V8, pre-loved and pampered, only repossessed last week, five grand. Go away or I'll call the cops. But Dad, I'm your son. Well, don't you remember that night years ago in Brisbane when you took a certain girl to a certain dance? Of course I took a girl to a dance. I'm not a puff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the soft Brisbane night was filled with the seductive sounds of fruit bats and cane toads. As you and she danced and drank the wine and danced and drank into the small hours. Yeah. Yeah, and then after walking her home, you sat out on her front porch, drank that last glass of wine, and then what happened? I chundered. 
<laughs> no, no, no. After that, Dad. Well, I don't know. How would I know? My mother remembers. She said to me, she said, Troy, you're old enough now to know that your father's real name is Edward Melba Bullpit. Are you sure she remembered the right name? How could you forget a name like that? <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're right. It's funny, I just don't remember meeting a Marlene Bridges in Brisbane. Well, I can prove it to you. I've got photos of you two together. You little purr. Oh, no, 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 no. At the dance. At the dance. Look, I've got the photos back in my case at the hotel. Um, I'll be back in a jiff. Don't start the celebrations without me, OK? What celebrations? I'm not celebrating. I just had me car stolen again 13 times. Yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Stop saying that. Everyone says that. Yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. I'll be back in a jiff. See you later. Marlene Bridges in Brisbane. Marlene Bridges in Brisbane. It's funny. I just don't remember it. Still, I suppose he must be right. Just a minute. I've never been to Brisbane. <laughs> Heidi, howdy, everybody. Here comes the party. He's Bob. Hello, world. Yes, it's me, Bobby Bullpit. Don't swoon, I'm human. <laughs> Rosa, 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 my steaming little temptress of wombat crescent, why don't I sweep you up in my arms and carry you off into the night? Because you'd get a hernia. <laughs> I remember once my poor dead Enzo. Yeah, yeah, right. sure, knock off the grief, Rosa. We all miss him as much as you. More, in fact, I sold him all his cars. Yes, I know. Oh, by the way, Rosa, how are you fixed for wheels? I don't have any cars. Well, you don't. Why not? We can fix that. Because you repossessed it the day after the funeral. Oh, yes. Well, uh, when you're ready, I've got a nice, clean, blue little 180B that'd be perfect for you. It's got baubles around the window and smiling poke cushions on the back shelf. <laughs> I know. I put them there. Is the one you repossessed. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, you know what a funny game business is. Uh, where's Grumblebum? In the lounge room. Oh. Oh, Bob, where is Mel? Mel who? Merle, your wife. Oh, oh, that Merle. She'll be here. You can't keep her away from the trough. <laughs> no, she's at her uh, punsy little theatre group. Imagine her acting. <laughs> They're doing the sound of music. Oh, really? Is she playing Julie Andrews? No, she's playing the piano. <laughs> In the lounge room, you say? Yes. Oh. I hate you. Hate, hate, vomit, spew. <laughs> What's the matter, Teddy? What's the matter? What happened to the, the carefree, fun-loving Chinese burn champion of Bandicoot Gully? I retired. A man can't Chinese burn forever. Besides, I married Thelma instead. The whole world's plotting against me as usual. I saw it in the paper. Thirteen times. Get a Datsun, mate. I can fix you up tomorrow. Mates rates. No? No? Better than that, family rates. No credit check. Well, just a little one to make sure we can trust you. What do you say, Ted? No, no, leave me alone. Man's life's not his own these days. I just can't cope anymore. The world's closing in around me. Oh, poor little Teddy. <laughs> Is the whole wide rotten world picking on Teddy Boo? Tell Uncle Bobby Wobby. Get your fingers out of my hair. Ah, oh, you're just such a sook, such a baby. Don't you talk to me about babies. At least you haven't got babies dropping out of the sky like frogs. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, well, I'm a bloody father again. Ted, you didn't. <laughs> Not Rosa. No. <laughs> well, who? I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? How did you do it? Mail order? Well, <laughs> this kid, some what kid. kid. Well, I don't know. He's about 23. He says his name's Troy. And he reckons I'm his old man and that me and his mum did, you know, you know, Rudy Doos after a dance in Brisbane. You? Yes, I can do it. <laughs> you? When were you in Brisbane? That's just it. I never was. Oh, you must have been. What was the name? Marlene Bridges. 
Marlene Bridges. What a raver she was! <laughs> Danny Daw! She asked me my name, but I wasn't giving her give her my name, so I gave her. Oh, never heard of her. <laughs> So you see, Craig, that's the whole story. Short and sweet, in a nutshell. The bare facts, straight from the shoulder. In the bare, ungarnished truth of it all. I didn't know you were in the Foreign Legion. <laughs> yes, well, uh, you can forget the bit about the Foreign Legion. I just put that in to make the story more interesting. Uh, but the rest is true, I swear it. Now, let me get this right. A beautiful undercover Nazi spy living in Brisbane in 1959 Intent on breeding a new master race, kidnaps you and rapes you at gunpoint at a Brisbane Datsun dealer's convention. That's roughly it, yeah. But then she becomes pregnant and years later her son has now turned up. Your son. Yeah. Your son who is the first of this new master race. Yeah. And he's a speedboat dealer. Yeah. Oh, rubbish. Yeah, well, maybe I glossed it over a bit. So she wasn't totally a Nazi spy. Well, what was she? A parking cop. <laughs> but she was wearing boots. Craig, Craig, you've got to help me. Well, what can I do? A blood test. Take some of my blood. Oh, when Mill finds out, you'll need all the blood you can get. <laughs> Mill won't find out so long as you and Ted keep your mouths closed. Rosa doesn't know, does she? No, she doesn't know a thing. Now, look, now, look. This blood test can prove that I'm not the kid's father, right? Right, only if his blood's different. It will be different, I know it. Well, why will it be different? Because I'm gonna bribe you. <laughs> what do you say, Craig? I've got a nice little blue Datsun 180B that no, I can buy like, <laughs> I can't. I'll throw in uh, some purple baubles oh, no, and some Bob. smiling Pope cushions. No. A dancing skeleton. No. All right, all right, all right. My final offer, a nodding dog with brake light eyes. <laughs> Come on, be reasonable. I can't. The Hippocratic Oath. Medical ethics. Ethics, oaths, integrity. You doctors are becoming a real pain in the bum. <laughs> Ever since Malcolm ripped Medibank apart, all the deals have gone out of medicine. He calls himself a free enterprise prime minister. All right. A grand in cash. But that's all I've got left in the world. No. Two grand. <laughs> Two grand. Two grand? Take it, take it. Pickle me grandmother. All he offered me was a tank full of petrol and a couple of smiling Pope cushions. <laughs> Listen to your old man, Craig. It's good advice. Take the money and throw the blood test. I can't. I'll do it. You're not a doctor. Oh. <laughs> I've got it. I'll tell Merle I used to be a doctor but forgot. <laughs> Good evening, Rosa. Let the festivities begin, such as they are. Oh, Moon, hello. Yes, yes, hello, Rosa. Are you understanding me? I said hello. Hello, Rosa. Hello, Moon. Oh, God. <laughs> Is Grumblebum home yet? Yes. And what about Pig Brain? Has he snuffled in <laughs> from Datsun Land? Yes. You are cooking in English now, I see. Yes, Moon. The book, Rosa. The book, what is? Is cookbook, Moon. <laughs> Cookbooks. Oh, I hate cookbooks. <laughs> They're so fattening. <laughs> you don't eat the books, Moon. <laughs> Thank you, Rosa. How kind of you to tell me. What is this boring book? Ah, is Australian Cooking Made Easy, printed by the Italian Women's Weekly. <laughs> Wait. Uh, oh, you're looking very lovely tonight, Merle. Yes, yes, so. Your hair, how do you get it up so high? I do it up a ladder, Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Merle. He's a nice lady, but her English is terrible. <laughs> All right, all right. My car, five grand, and Merle's jewellery. But that's my absolutely... Ah, Merle! Pickle me, grandmother, it's Merle, run! Freeze, Ted, for the sake, where are you going? Uh, uh, oh, Auntie Merle, oh, Auntie Merle, you're looking ravishing tonight. Yes, yes, so. Yeah, well, I'm, going, um, uh, I'm due back at the hospital in an, in an hour. I go. See you later, Dad. A coward. Uh, bye, Uncle Bob. All right, my Playboy collection. 
No. Bobby, Ted, what is going on? You will think I'll just have a shower. You've just had one? Yeah, but I missed a bit. Now, what are you two devious little boys up to? Nothing, Merle. Honest. Oh, boy, what a day. What a late night. Thanks for the dinner, Ted. Come on, everyone. Home time, Merle. Freeze. A rick a pooty and a fan doodly. Hi there. You there? I'm Troy the boy. Put her there. What is that? I'm Ted son. What? It's true, Merle. I had to be the one to point the finger, but this poor innocent boy is the illegitimate son of Ted. Let's go. Freeze! It's a lie, I tell you, Merle. No, it isn't. I've got a photo of Mum and my real father here. Let me see that. Now, Merle. Oh, Bobby. But, but, Merle, I... This is a photo of you, isn't it, Bobby? Well, a bit. <laughs> and that lumpy barmaid who had to move to Brisbane after a certain Christmas party. Excuse me, madam, you're talking about my mother. I'm sorry, my boy, but you don't know your father like I know your father. Hey. Eh? Daddy! <laughs> so you see, Ted, uh, Bob, well, now that I know, my curiosity's satisfied. I don't want to ruin Bob's life. Please, ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 seriously, um, I can see there's no place for me in this family, so I think I'll be going. I'll drive you to the airport. Oh, no. no. The train? No. The Greyhound bus? No, no. I got a nice little Datsun 180. No. <laughs> what did you call me? Dad. Bob! Oh. It's Bob. Call me Bob. No, uh, Bob. <laughs> I've got my own transport. Oh, yeah? What is it, a motorbike? A Learjet. Full size? Yep. Pickle me grandmother. But uh, how... I'm the biggest speedboat dealer in Queensland. And what's more, Bob, I'm a millionaire. Call me Dad. 